Hello and welcome and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you the top 10 most legendary arc tames. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. In at number 10 we have got ourselves the Crystal Wyvern and this creature is here simply because, come on, it's the Crystal Wyvern. Compared to the normal Wyvern I find it is just a much better creature and it is so much better for me that I have to put it on the legendary creatures list. It's kind of a marvel, a miracle if you will, that this creature is actually in the game. A Wyvern and even a better version of the Wyvern that is significantly easier to tame than the normal Wyvern and also just generally a lot less hassle on servers as a lot less people tend to be on Crystal Isles than maps like Ragnarok. Ragnarok is actually the most popular arc map out there at least i'm still confident it is i'm not sure where fjorda is at but i'm pretty sure ragnarok is still the king also on top of that you might be saying well why been spawn on scorched earth well they're really just a pain on that map where it is on crystal isles with the crystal wyverns you can simply just get the prime crystal you knock out one of these things and you can get the prime crystal from them and then it'd be level 60 passive tame them and boom it there you go the personal favorite of mine is the blood crystal wyvern i just really like the abilities that it has this is the tropical crystal wyvern but a lot of you out there in the comments below have been saying you really love the ember crystal wyverns and they definitely are a really good one as well and if you've never tried out crystal wyvern before if you're anti-crystal wyvern as well really try one out for yourself and if you've tried them loads and then you still hate them then that is the only excusable excuse for not liking these things continuing on we have got ourselves the snow owl this creature can be found all across extinction and i think it can also be found on fjorda as well and it really is one of those gold stars it gets a gold star from me if you will this creature is just so great in its density of abilities and it's just general use like pvp players can use this thing pve players can use it it's not very one-sided it's so versatile in all of its features namely it is a glider which means you can really rack up some serious speed with this thing it does definitely help yes managamas have a lot of speed on them but still you can actually gather quite a significant amount of it with a creature like this you're not really missing out too much they can't quite get to the same speeds but still there's a lot more control i find in a creature like this at least at my current skill level with flying managamas they also do kind of have a, a uv heat seeking it's not uv is it it's infrared it would be for heat either way they have a infrared heat seeking ability where they can see heat coming off of any organism and i'm not sure if just general hot things like lava show as well but that should just be pretty obvious anyway you can kind of use it like a night vision camera as well also if you level up stamina on these things not only can they fly longer distances but you can also heal up creatures with them which again is just going to make these things really nice to use it is ideal to have a creature that can heal others in this way like yes the daedon does definitely do a good job at healing creatures but i find the snow owl just has it better and also with uh snow Owl pellets being useful for gachas as well to get some insane loot out of them they really are so versatile and you should definitely use one of the things these things at some point considering just how easy they are to tame so a fan favorite of many at the moment and obviously just ever since release it's not really a trend thing this has always been at the top of many lists ever since it was launched i'm not actually sure when it's a 2023 creature it released at some point uh in that time i think later on in the year but it could have been earlier on as well again my mind is really not the most up to date with things like this they just time goes by so fast doesn't it really and you look at back at all these things and you're like actually when was that either way the running Ganatha can be found on the island and also the lost island and i find on normal arc these creatures are quite rare whereas on asa they're a lot more abundant i don't know what it is is it just like how the spawns work or is it just some kind of placebo where i'm just like oh yeah more are definitely spawning when actually no more are spawning uh, i haven't really played much asa anyway so it's not that i've played more either way looking on it the rhino ganatha is an extremely strong uh, tame which you can find in the swamp biome and it really is going to be extremely useful for that job not only because they can deal heavy amounts of damage but also they can pick up a large range of creatures as well and on top of it they're just heavily mobile flyers which are really capable they're really strong in what they do and although their tame method is pretty much just a rehashing of the reaper it's still 
a really cool one to walk through and now with the net gun and things like that this tame actually does become quite a breeze it's a lot harder especially if you go for the 100% effectiveness i find that not really to be the most useful on a creature like this that's just my personal preference though but you know you might think differently comment your thoughts down below are you a pro 100% effectiveness on running against others or against it because it seems to me a lot more effort than it's worth and they're really not that difficult to tame anyway just get yourself the highest level one that you can find and tame it uh, just normally you don't need the 100 effectiveness if you have the resources at the time then just go for it you might as well but you know for me it's not really worth it because they're not really boss creatures and they still really do pack a punch no matter the effectiveness but it obviously does matter on the level some really low level ones tend to really lack in the health department and at number seven we have got ourselves at the argentavis this creature is here as for me it is just one of those kings i can't live in arc without an argentavis in the map spawns all over the island and really is a popular one among many including myself it is so capable of gathering things like metal crystal and obsidian especially considering it has weight reduction on them obviously it's not going to be doing the gathering but it's going to be doing all of the heavy lifting and the carrying obviously you compare it with nanki and adodic and then you can gather all that metal crystal obsidian stone uh, thatch wood even depending on what creatures you're using so there's a lot of versatility you can get out of a creature like this also people do give them a bit of a, a bad hit sometimes for their slowness whereas actually i find they're not the slowest things out there and especially considering that you've got a very high stamina and very high weight stats they are a lot nicer to use than something like a pteranodon in my opinion yes they're not as fast but you don't have to take as many breaks especially if at the time you don't really have a very high level pteranodon because you tend to be taming lower level ones as they are kind of first flies in the game but obviously you will get some higher ones later on but still even with 150s i find they're a bit lackluster in the stamina and weight department still whereas the rgs really aren't and you can really push with an RG. On top of that as well, their saddle does act as a portable smithy, which is just a really nice addition to have, and also a nice regen buff is gained if you kill something or if you just eat any general dead corpse. Now, I'm sure you all did expect this creature to be on the list, and yes, we have got ourselves the Shadow Main. This is just one of those creatures where it is so improved from something like the Thyla. It kind of seems a little bit mental why you'd still be using those apart from their climbing ability and also just general accessibility i'm not saying the thyla doesn't have any use anymore you can still definitely use it it is a great creature it's not like it's had all of its abilities stripped from it but there's just less going for it now since this creature's been released and i know it's been released for a while but still you know it's the thyla has been around still for a lot longer than this thing it is fast agile can go invisible has the hydration buff deals tons of damage has natural armor and no saddle is required and although the tail method can be an absolute pain pretty much all of the time they are really nice to have and also they're pretty decent underwater as well which you might not expect but you also might expect considering their code name in the game is lionfish lion so you know they better be good at swimming and they definitely are really great boss creatures as well and just general all-rounders they've got the mobility they've got the damage they've got really everything going for them in a small carnivore in another five we have got the bloodstalker and i put this creature here as i find it is so useful for doing any kind of like underwater exploration and i know you can get megalodons and moses and basilos and all those creatures to uh, be able to explore those underwater environments but i find with a creature like this this is the top tier one out there i have found nothing better ever since i started using it firstly you can skim over the top of the water and also once in the water it has an incredible amount of speed and you can see all the aggros of the creatures nearby as well so it really does generally benefit you and i'm not sure if it has the kind of neutral mode as well i haven't actually used these things within the past week and my brain is failing me because i've had some other musicy stuff going on if you are wondering by the way either way these creatures incredibly great for underwater travel but also just incredibly great for normal travel as well they are so ideal for general travel as long as you have some kind of elevation in the area it's not going to work on just flat planes but they still do have a, a decent amount of speed in them walking although it can be a little bit of a drag and there's some better creatures out there just for walking across flat planes you can find some creatures which will 
vastly excel uh, compared to the Bloodstalker in that asset, but this has other uses. Also on top of that, they actually aren't the worst damage dealers out there. You definitely wouldn't be bringing these things into boss fights, I'm not even sure if they're allowed into boss fights, probably not considering their like grappling abilities all around. But they're not actually the worst damage dealers, and you can actually, if you get a high level one, deal some pretty decent damage to some enemies. You'd probably be surprised, actually. Now, I'm sure you expected the Desmodus to be on this list. Come on, it is the Desmodus after all. Probably my favourite or second favourite glider, really, considering what's coming up next on the list. Although, that one does work quite differently, as it's technically not a flyer. And Although, this does have the gliding ability. It's still a flyer, but it, it glides in a way. The next one is just generally a glider. And it's not the Rock Drake. The Rock Drake is... Sadly not on this list. Sorry, it's not a legendary tame for me. I know it's a really great creature, but still, you know, it's not quite for me. Whereas the Desmodus definitely is. You've got Sangre Elixir. It's an absolute cheat for tames. Obviously, that gliding ability is going to want you tons of speed, which is really nice. Then grip onto walls and vertical surfaces, just like a Tapijara. They're much better than a Tapijara, by the way. Much more worth your time as well. The exact same tame method as the Bloodstalker. Simply just get some blood bags and they will eat it out of your inventory. And boom, Desmodus. They do also need a saddle as well. But that's fine. Also, you get additional armor with the saddle anyway. So it's usually a good thing to have a saddle than to not. Also, on top of this as well, they can go invisible and pick players off Riders too with absolute ease. In at number three, we have got ourselves the Maywing. And this creature really did have to be here for me. Come on. It is that cute Pacifus glider which has an incredible amount of speed and incredible amount of use in the traveling aspects. They really are OP creatures for this, especially considering you can get them around the time that you'd be getting yourself a raptor. They are some of the most OP creatures considering how early on you can get them in the game. And if you have access to them, I implore you, please get yourself some Maywings and start training on them and get good at flying them. They might seem a little bit difficult and a little bit clunky, a little bit quirky at first, but trust me, once you get used to them, you are never going to want to turn back from these things. They are the ideals, and it's actually nice when you just transfer one onto your server in ASA. There's just a lot more that you can do on the island once you've got a Maywing on the map. Just travelling is so much easier. You thought Tyranodon was fast, Look at the Maywing, these things are absolute zoomers across the map. Not on the uh, the generation standard though, that's a different thing. Either way, also uh, these things act as a portal feeding trough as well. Just great if you like your breeding. Also these things can skim across the top of water and they're pretty good barrier gatherers as well with that uh, cute belly flop of theirs. Really useful, great legendary tames. In at number two, we've got ourselves the Reaper. This creature has to be here for me. Come on, it's the Reaper. This invented that pretty weird and very, very innovative and interesting taming method that we all know and love from the Rhino Ganatha. Obviously, it's basically just a reskin of it, but essentially, this is the creature that started it, and for me, it is so much more legendary. Just taming a Reaper for the first time is probably one of the coolest things that you can do in the game, especially if you don't want Aberration. Or Gen 2 feels a little bit like a cheese because it's so easy, unless you obviously still do it the normal way, but still, it just generally is easier because you've got flyers on that map and you've got gliders and all of those things. I know you have the Rotrek on Aberration, but still, you're very limited for traveling creatures on that map and they're so deep down under in the depths that it really does add a lot of good sense of progression once you actually finally get one of these things and even once you tame one or once you're impregnated by a reaper queen you still want to come all the way back up into safety and it's just such a long endeavor but such a fun one and i definitely do employ you to do it once you've got one as well you can deal tons of damage you feel on top of the world these creatures are definitely well worth it yes you've got gigas and cockroaches and they're legendary in their own way but not as legendary as the 10 creatures on this list, and certainly not as legendary as the Reaper King. And finally, in at number one, we've got ourselves the Deinonychus. This always tops the list for me. I don't know what it is about this creature, but I do, obviously. It's, it's on here, in at number one spot, and I'm going to talk about why I love it so much. But it's so, it's so interesting how this creature has really gripped me as an ARC player. Firstly, they've got tons of speed and mobility. It's insane, actually, how much speed you can get on these things. And they take no full damage, which is just really great for me. I know you can just dismount just before you hit the ground, but you lose a little bit of immersion there because obviously you wouldn't 
really be able to do that in real life just the smoothness and fluidity of not having to do that really does benefit you and you can just absolutely tear creatures to shreds with the bleed ability especially considering that you can grip onto them and do this as well you can even do this to bosses which is insane you can shred through bosses so quickly especially considering these things also have the pack buff they really do have everything going for them apart from the hydration buff and underwater exploration but you don't really need that for this creature so yes maybe it's not the perfect all-rounder but there's no creature which really does build all the assets while you might say the shadow man does a similar thing it lacks in the bleed ability and it also does lack a climbing ability which the dynamicus has and it also lacks the uh, no fall damage and on top of that as well they can't deal the bleed damage obviously with the bleed ability which the dynamicus and the thyla can but the thyla isn't even allowed into bosses so we're gonna outrule that one completely so yes the dynamicus really is the most legendary creature for me very easy tames as well and so so worth it out of every creature in arc this is the one which i will be taming the most the 10 most reliable arc tames in at number 10 is the thyla and you can always rely on a really really good thyla to make your day even better and it is an extremely reliable creature as it is very easy to control very easy to use and it will always do the job that you want it to do unless you're fighting bosses obviously as the thyla is not allowed in boss arenas which kind of does make sense this is a really really op creature capable of so many things but the fact that the deinonychus is allowed in boss arenas is a kind of a bit of a shame really that the thyla isn't as well as they are pretty similar creatures when you think about it and the thyla is definitely a reliable one and one which is very very easy to tame as well albeit not spawning in the nicest of arc biomes being in the redwoods biome which isn't a very kind place but compared to some other biomes that you'll find in arc like the swamp even on the islands the redwoods is a much much friendlier place and the fact that this is a simple knockout tame and it really isn't a difficult to figure out tame or really a difficult tame especially with the net gun obviously you don't have that on asa but on asc you do and even with a basic trap as well they are really really simple tames really easy to tame the only thing you have to avoid is just them pouncing on you when they're in the trees but if you take the right precautions these things are really really easy to tame and i can't stress that enough and also on top of that their saddle level isn't too high as well they're really quick they're really agile they're really mobile they can climb so many surfaces which makes them really great reliable travel mounts they have a great weight stat as well which is another really really useful thing for even something like a carnivore to have especially one of this size as you will be logging around some gear or resources or whatever you are actually going to be logging around or using this creature for in general and obviously through all of that they will still give you all of that necessary damage which you require the thyla is honestly an insanely great tame one of which you should tame as soon as you can next up we have the theri and the theri is one of the best creatures you will find out there in arc nothing can really compare to the tickle chickens reliability in terms of all of its harvesting and its gathering this creature is just so so useful for so many things the fact that it can gather loads of fiber is an absolute godsend the fact that it can gather loads of wood and thatch and berries and loads of meat as well as it is great at dealing loads and loads of damage but what would you really expect from those absolutely massive claws of which it yields the theory is an insanely great creature for so so many things and it was reliable for everything it is easy to control easy to tame albeit its taming does take a little bit longer compared to some other tames and you wouldn't expect it to take that long for its size but it is mainly because it is a herbivore and herbivore tames do generally take a little bit longer obviously unless you have vegetables or kibble then it'll be pretty much the same as the carnivore tames and also its saddle is unlocked at level 69 too which is just a nice little bonus nice and also on top of all of that as well the theory is great for killing the dragon on the island as it is a herbivore and the dragon's fire ability deals an obscene amount of damage to carnivores so the theory is pretty much your best friend when it comes to that boss fight
Right, next on the list we have the UT. And the UT is one of those creatures which I will always need for any boss fight that I may be doing, unless it's the Moda, as this thing really doesn't go underwater very well. But that is not what you're going to be using this thing for. You are going to be using this to be that creature that you ride on, especially on single player, when you're doing the bosses. You send your fighting creatures in, you keep the Deodon by your side, and you just use those incredible rules that it has and it will work every time and it is so easy no matter your arc skill level the UT will be a really really reliable creature for you there is no way which you can get the UT wrong you simply just have to press a button and it does a thing and then 30 seconds later you press that button again and it keeps doing that thing and your creatures are going to be even stronger and in some cases if you use the fear roll as well it will debuff the enemy creatures even though that doesn't really apply for bosses as they are creatures of great size and there is a size limit on what the fear roar applies to but still a very useful thing in just general combat around the arc map as well especially for creatures which are smaller than the ut which i think is around the size limit and definitely for pvp raiders on pteranodons but just before we continue make sure to hit that like button and the subscribe as it really helps out the channel now the anki is obviously one of the most useful creatures that you will encounter in arc and it is by far the most reliable way to get all of that necessary metal which is by far one of the most important resources if not the most important resource in arc you are going to use that thing so much for tools weapons armor structures saddles you name it metal is going to be used and you need to gather that metal in some way and obviously you can always use the metal pick and the metal hatchet but the anki is going to gather even more metal every single time with the exact same reliability every time so you always always know what to expect when gathering metal with this thing and it's just so nice to use and so easy to use that again like the ut you can't get this wrong you press a button and then boom absolute insane amounts of metal and you can definitely put the dodic in this position as well as both of those creatures are really really reliable easy ways to get resources quick fast and easily and definitely creatures which you will need to use at some point especially if you're playing solo to get all of that progress done quickly and efficiently and these things are definitely going to help you out on that arc grind now the basilo is a creature which is probably the best ocean tame in arc there is nothing to me which really does compare to this creature in terms of its uses and reliability this is the best creature out there for doing any kind of underwater caves although it does have a depth limit which is a little bit sad but it kind of does make sense and it adds an essence of realism to this creature as well but the reason why it is so reliable in the ocean is mainly because of one ability which it has which pretty much no other arc creature has even to this day but the facilisucus will have that ability and actually i don't even know if it's in the game at the moment i think it is it might be on asa the island i'm not really sure and i haven't tamed one of those yet and the basilo is available to all arc players so that is why it is on this list it is immune to eels and jellyfish and all of those kind of creatures, which is an absolute godsend when it comes to Ark, as they are the most pesky creatures in the ocean, and there's really no way to get around them, apart from when you have that legendary Basilo, as you can simply just swim past them and they can't do anything to you. So relaxing. In at number five is the Barry, and this is by far the best creature out there for doing any kind of cave runs, and especially on ASA at the moment, as the island is the only real available map to the general public at the moment. Obviously, Spartal Farm is there as well, but that is a little bit of a janky thing to get through, and I'll not talk about it again in this video, as it is not really relevant. In terms of the Barry's abilities, like I've said, this is the best caving creature out there because of its size. It is just so good at getting into caves and it is so reliable as every time it will get into that cave and it will do the job you need it to do, which is to get you to that cave artifact and then that you can retrieve it safely and get out of the cave with no deaths. First try, no issues, 
no problems. And obviously some of the caves, like the insect cave, you may want to use something like a mega Ethereum, but you'll need to use a mana of cryos, and the fact that this thing is so convenient that you can simply just walk it into the cave and then walk it out, apart from obviously that one ice cave where literally no creature will fit, it is so, so convenient and it has a wealth of abilities to help you along the way as well. Like its spin ability, which you may have just seen there, which can stun creatures up to the size of a megalodon. Definitely a cool ability to have and definitely a really reliable, insanely great caving creature. Now there is no doubt that the Giga is built for all of that power. And the fact that this is a really, really reliable creature on top of that, as you can get the same power every time when using it, is insane. And you may say, what about the Carcodontosaurus? Isn't that a more reliable better large carnivore but the fact is its taming method is so buggy and sometimes with its bleed ability its damage will vary so you don't know what to expect out of it every single time and sometimes it can be a really really unreliable tame which the giga isn't you know how to tame it you know what to expect you know how many resources it will take and then every time you use the giga you know how much damage it will do and you'll know instantly where its limits are and what it is best used for and obviously when you use it you will know exactly every single time how it will perform and all of that and you'll have no stress about it and obviously you can have more and obviously you can always add more gigas if you need more power but i never really need more than one unless i'm facing the titans on extinction then i will definitely use more than one as one simply isn't enough and the only thing really to be careful for is their rage meter as that is the only thing which is slightly unreliable about them, as if they take too much damage, they'll kick you off and simply kill you. So definitely, so definitely be very, very careful when using the Giga, obviously. But apart from that, it is the most insane Kano you will see. In at number three is the Rex. And there is no doubt that the Rex is by far one of the most reliable carnivores out there. It is such a balanced tame that you always know what to expect out of a Rex. And they are so predictable when it comes to what they can do, what their health is, what their stamina is, what their weight is, and what the Rex's limits are. And that makes them an extremely useful tame. You may think all of that will make a boring tame, but actually it makes an even more useful one, as if you know everything about that creature and what it can do and what it can't do, you can utilize that creature to the fullest. Obviously, the Rex isn't going to do what the Giga or the Carcodontosaurus can, but it can do a lot, and especially when it comes to bosses, where Gigas and Carcodontosauruses are not allowed into the boss arenas. And especially on maps like Gen 1, the Giga is great for the Master Controller boss fight, especially with X Rexes as well, as if you have Gen 1, you should definitely cash into those X rexes as they are an even better version of the normal rex just with a little bit of a buffed ability which is i think minus 25 percent in terms of damage that other creatures will deal and plus 25 percent on damage reduction so it is an extremely useful thing to have and actually on second thought it may just be 125 percent extra in terms of damage reduction which is good obviously you get that extra 25 percent and it just makes that creature a little bit stronger and it gives it the extra special edge but the rex is definitely a reliable one one of which is really easy to tame and it is a very simple knockout tame very very easy and simple and you can't really go wrong with one in at number two is the Desmodus and you may think well why is this creature reliable its taming method is actually very very buggy at times but actually I haven't found it to be very buggy in comparison to things like the Carcodontosaurus and if you are taming a low level from the start it is actually a pretty easy tame to get your head around as it is pretty much a slightly shelled out passive tame it is just a little bit of a more complex passive tame you could say there's better words than what i used previously and it is it's, it's actually very simple when you kind of get down to it you just feed it blood bags when it picks you up and then you tame yourself a desmodus pretty simple and you can also feed it creatures maybe i think to get 100 effectiveness 
or that's how you do it on the Bloodstalker. Probably, don't quote me on that one, I've never tamed one of these with 100% effectiveness, as that's not the kind of arc player I usually am. And once tamed, you got yourself a very, very reliable flyer, capable of so many things, they're so quick, they're easy to use, and they are an absolute blood bag farm and they're really reliable for taming as well with that sanguine elixir and in at number one is the rg and what would you expect really the rg is just that tame which every single arc player needs at some point in their journey and i know pretty much no one actually literally no one that has played arc for a decent amount of time over 100 hours that has not use the rg at some point and it's just one of those creatures which has to be used at some point this thing is great for gathering metal obviously it doesn't gather the metal it just transports you from a to b and then you gather the metal but it does have weight reduction on resources like metal crystal and obsidian and its saddle acts as a little smithy too which is actually pretty good i'm not sure how expensive the saddle is overall it's unlocked in the late 60s i think in terms of level don't think level 69 like the theory which is a little bit sad but obviously getting that saddle as early as possible is really what you want to do with the rg as once you have it you can level up from your sad pteranodon which you may have not that the pteranodon is a bad tame and all but the rg is significantly better as it actually has good stam it actually has good weight and no 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 more frustrations when it comes to metal gathering with the pteranodon will be needed from then on once you have the rg and obviously you can pick up a wealth of creatures as well which is extremely useful and when paired with the Anki, you have an absolute metal farming machine of a creature. And if you're with friends as well, you can pick up some other players too. And don't forget, if you're low on health, just quickly eat a dead corpse and you will get an insane regen buff. Definitely a reliable tame. But anyway, that was the end of today's video. And I want to know from you down in the comments, what are your 10 most reliable arc tames to you? And I will see you all later.